The first thing to understand in this whole ball tampering saga is that the tampering of the ball is a relatively minor part of it. It's been happening for years. Captains have done it, bowlers have done it, fielders have done it. They've been designated players to do it. And that is why it's not such a big crime in the gallery of crimes within the ICC. If you throw a game, that's a much bigger crime. Altering the condition of the ball is at best a level 2 offence. If you haven't done it before, you could get a game off, you could get 75% of your match fee off, you could get 100% of your match fee off, but there are far bigger crimes committed in cricket. The reason this has become very big is twofold. One is the captain of a very proud cricketing nation went and told everybody there on that press conference that they had planned it and this is how it was always going to be. And there's an enormous feeling within the Australian community of being let down. The captain of Australia, as has often been said, is the second most important person in Australia. A former head of state, John Howard, said the Australian cricket captain is actually the most important person in Australia. And they like their sports people to, be as, to use their language to play it hard and fair. Australia's cricket captain is a big, big part of Australia's culture. And then for the captain to come up and say, you know what, we cheated, is shattering for Australian society. It was only recently that the Australian newspaper had Stephen Smith as their Australian of the year. He was supposed to be, after Bradman, the next big batsman. I know you've said that before, but that was his position in the side. And that is far bigger than just the crime, the fact that an Australian admitted to cheating. Why is there so much outrage around the cricket world? And that is because the Australians have been living in a bubble all along. The Australians believe that they draw the line on what is acceptable and that the whole world should therefore obey that line. What they don't understand is that what they think is acceptable has over the years actually been considered revolting by some others. And that is why when the whole David Warner issue happened and now with Stephen Smith, there's been such downright condemnation around the cricket world because everybody believes that that Australian line is not a line that everybody else is part of. And therefore that is what I believe, where I believe Australia were a bit wrong in that they didn't have this outside air coming in. Sometimes you can live in a bubble, you can carry this air of invincibility around you and you can believe that anything goes, that we are Australia, that anything is possible. And that is why I, th I think they thought that they could get away with this. When you, when you become famous, you think you can get away with things. What Australia needed, I believe, in the dressing room was someone to say, you know what, Captain, I think we're making an error of judgment. But we see that so often. When the leader stands up and says, I think we're going to do this, how many voices stand up and say no? When Hansi Kronia said in Mumbai, guys, here's an offer on the table to lose the match. What do you think? There were only one or two dissenting voices. A lot of them said, so what, let's go on. And that is why I think it's not just about the captain, but about the air in that Australian team. There had to be somebody above, the manager, the coach maybe, who's creating an environment in the team that said, it's okay if we lose, but this is a line that we will not cross. And so Australia's line was very different from a moral line that the rest of the world believed, uh, believed they should have. And I think that is where the greater outrage is. And so the ICC cannot do more. The ICC cannot find them more. The ICC cannot ban players because the ICC has already given the maximum punishment possible under the crime. Cricket Australia's uh, punishment will be far greater, I believe. So where, where is this thing headed now? I think there's no doubt in my mind that Stephen Smith will not captain Australia again. I think Australia feel a bit let down with David Warner as well. And so they will now have to find a captain from outside the 11 because there is nobody else in this playing 11 who can, who can garner the same level of support. Maybe get George Bailey back, which leads me to the other issue. This Australian side's problem was not with the bowling, but with the batting. They took a chance with their bowling and they said, you know what, we need to do something different with our bowling. This is the best four in world cricket. They should have backed their bowlers to win the game. Instead, they said, we need to do something with the bowling because we don't back our batting to come back. The desperation in Steve Smith's mind came because he did not think his batsman could pull him back in the series and therefore the need to do something immediate over there. So Australia now will have to look for another captain. I, I, I do not believe that captain resides in the first 11 that is here. Tim Payne is not a long-term captain. The two marshes are not long-term players. They're always on the edge of an injury. Usman Khwaja hasn't become the player you thought he could. The fast bowlers are always going to be rested. Nathan Lyon, I don't know if Nathan Lyon is going to be the captain. So they're going to have to look for someone from outside, somebody who almost comes and tells the Australian public, 
doesn't matter if we win or lose, but we are going to play cricket a certain way and go up to the Australian society, to Australian people and say, I'm sorry, but we will play the brand of Australian cricket that, will, uh, that you will accept and will bring trust back. So they've got to find that person. I don't know if it's Michael Clark. I don't know if it's George Bailey. I don't know if they'll have to do a Bob Simpson and get someone back as they did in the late 70s. But Australian cricket is going through a, a phase where they believe they're being cheated and the world is enjoying this situation because Australia have done it to the others for so long. So it's not about ball tampering. The sentence against ball tampering has been passed. There's nothing more you can do with ball tampering. It is now about Australian society, about a leader letting his team down and that sentence will be tougher. Apart from being a moral issue, it was also almost unbelievable sense of judgment from Australia to believe they could actually get away with it. Yes, they asked Cameron Bancroft to do it. It's criminal of senior players in the team to ask a youngster to do it. But how on earth did Australia believe they're going to get away with it? They come from a land which has the, one of the best cricket coverage in the world. It's got 25, 30 cameras. They're in a country that's hostile to them. They're being watched. There was no chance they were going to ever get away with it. I don't know if they got away with it in the past, that's, that's conjecture that emboldened them to do this maybe, but it was incredibly silly and incredibly naive to believe that they could get away with this with so many cameras watching every move.